Understandably, dinosaurs captivate the minds of the young and old around the world, but there are also plenty of other creatures that lived at the same time or just after the dinosaurs that deserve more attention. Today we have lost the majority of our megafauna, but this planet was once home to some true giants. The majority of these giants have modern day counterparts, and I will be comparing the size of our modern day creatures to the giants that we have unfortunately lost. It's easy to forget that humans have laid eyes on most of these creatures, and in most cases we are the reason behind their extinction. During our early dominance in the Pleistocene and Holocene, we learned to hunt most of this planet's megafauna. This had a massive negative effect on their numbers, and human hunting along with a changing climate finished off many megafauna species. Even though some people are trying to bring them back, most of them are gone for good, but today I will be going through a few of them. To start off this video we will be heading over to Australia, as we will be taking a look at the Diprotodon. Diprotodon is an extinct genus of marsupial, dating back 1.7 million to around 40,000 years ago. Diprotodon is the largest known marsupial to have ever existed, as it was thought to reach a size of around 1.8 meters at the shoulder and over 4 meters from head to tail. It's estimated that it could have weighed as much as 3.5 tons, and females were known to be much smaller than males. It's believed that Diprotodon was the inspiration behind the Bunyip, which is a mythical beast that lives in swamps and riverbeds. According to legends, they are man-eating monsters, and at night they wander onto land. If you look at depictions of the Bunyip, they do look quite similar to Diprotodon, and if you came across Diprotodon bones, you may think that they belong to a giant beast. Some believe that the Bunyip is still alive today, but Diprotodon definitely isn't. This genus was named after its incisors, and these incisors were thought to be ever-growing. Its jaws would have been able to produce a strong bite force, and this could have given it some protection against predators. These predators would have come in the form of the marsupial lion, giant monitor lizards, and large extinct crocodiles. The diprotodons were plant eaters, and they were thought to play a similar role in the Australian ecosystem, as the African elephants do in the African ecosystem. It's thought that they fell victim to the expansion of Australia's human population, and it's also thought that large droughts also played a part. Even though these animals don't look a lot like many modern day creatures, their closest relatives are koalas and wombats. If you scaled down these creatures, you could argue that they look very similar to modern day wombats, but the difference in size is monumental. There are three species of wombat alive today, two have relatively healthy populations, and one is critically endangered. The critically endangered species is the largest species alive today, as they can measure up to 1 meter long and they can weigh up to 40 kilograms. Even though this is a relatively impressive size, they are nowhere near the size of their ancestors, and it's a shame that we don't have giant wombats strolling around today. For our next giant extinct creature, we will be heading into the water, as we will be taking a look at Zephactinus. Zephactinus is a genus of extinct fish, and it was once found in the shallow waters of North America, Western Europe, and Australia. It dates back to the late Cretaceous around 90 to 65 million years ago, and this giant fish was a predator. It has an extremely long, streamlined body, and many fossils of this fish have been found with other fish inside of them. The majority of members in this genus were equipped with very sharp teeth and a relatively large mouth compared to their bodies. This allowed them to swallow extremely large prey, and I'm sure many people out there will be very happy that they're not still around today. Zephactinus was the largest bony fish of its period, but it was far from the top predator of its ecosystem. Remains of this fish have been found inside of prehistoric shark fossils, but I think it's safe to say that this fish would have been very hard to catch. The largest members of this genus would have dwarfed most fish alive today, as it's thought that they could have reached a maximum size of around 5 to 6 meters. It's thought that a fish of this size could have weighed around 450 kilograms, and it was definitely a predator not to be messed with. Zephactinus's closest relatives are thought to be knife fish, arowana, and arapaima, but you could argue that its modern day counterpart is the tarpon. There are two species of tarpon alive today, but I will be focusing on the larger Atlantic tarpon. This species has a very similar body shape to Zephactinus, and it's possible that it plays a very similar role in its ecosystem. Tarpons are highly aggressive predators, and they feed on a wide variety of fish and other animals. 
Like Cephactinus, their only real aquatic predators are sharks, but in most cases they are able to outmaneuver them. The Atlantic tarpon is quite a prehistoric creature in its own right, as they were thought to have evolved around 18 million years ago. This may explain their prehistoric appearance, and it's impressive that they have survived mostly unchanged for this long. Like many other prehistoric fish, the Atlantic tarpon is able to breathe atmospheric oxygen, and this gives it an advantage against its competition. This means that they can survive in areas with very low oxygen levels, and they could take advantage of ecosystems that other large predators can't. Even though the Atlantic tarpon is nowhere near the size of Cephactinus, it is still a modern day giant. They can reach a maximum length of around 2.5 meters, and they can weigh up to 161 kilograms. Outside of the shark world, they are one of the largest predatory fish, and it would be terrifying to see a much, much larger one. For our final entry, we will be heading back on land, as we have Megacerops. Megacerops is a genus of prehistoric mammals, but it's also thought by many to include the species of other genera. These animals were odd-toed ungulates, and they were found in North America during the late Eocene, around 38 to 34 million years ago. These animals were large plant eaters, and the majority of them had large blunt appendages on the ends of their snouts. It's thought that the males used these blunt appendages to fight each other, as many of them had rib fractures that would support this theory. Of course, they would also use them for defense against predators, and during their time, they had quite a few. The reason behind the extinction of this genus is thought to be climate change, and the consequent change in vegetation. The largest members of this genus were true giants, as they stood around 2.5 meters at the shoulder, and measured around 4.6 meters in length. It's thought that an animal of this size could have weighed 3.8 tons, and this would mean that it would have to get through a lot of food. Even slight changes in the plant life would have affected this animal greatly, and this is possibly the reason behind its extinction. Even though all the members of this genus are extinct today, these animals were related to rhinos and horses. Physically, they most resemble rhinos, but they were a little larger than these creatures. The largest rhino species alive today is the white rhino, and these animals have a maximum body length of around 4 meters. An animal of this size can reach a weight of around 3.6 tons, and this size means that the white rhino is the second largest land animal alive today. If Megacerops were alive today, they would take this second place spot, but unfortunately they are gone for good. If you think there are any other creatures that could have made it on this list, then let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.